Periclinoid aneurysms represent a true microsurgical challenge for resolution due to their proximity with neurovascular structures of the skull base. We present a case. A 42-year-old woman with headaches detecting periclinoid aneurysm and angiography. This lateral and then anteroposterior angiographic view of the left carotid artery, the periclinoid aneurysm can be seen highlighted with a white arrow. A left terrenal approach plus exposure of the left internal carotid at the cervical level was performed. In this anatomical specimen, a left terrenal approach is demonstrated. Frontotemporal craniotomy drilling the lateral orbital wall. An anatomical exposure of the optic nerve clinoid process and carotid artery was performed. After the clinodectomy, we can observe the lateral surface of the clinoidal segment with lower and upper carotid rings. The microsurgery starts dissecting the sylvian fissure from distal to proximal. The anterior clinoid process was exposed, observing the aneurysm originating from the clinoid segment of the carotid artery, being impossible to perform. The clipping without an anterior clinodectomy. The dura matter was cut medially from the optic canal to the clinoid process. Drilling was performed at the base of the clinoid process with a 3 mm diamond tip to expose the distal carotid dural ring. Working with caution due to the thinness of the aneurysmal wall, the swirling blood inside the aneurysmal sac can be seen in the surgical video. The interior clinoid process has dense cortical bone along these surfaces and cancellous bone at its core. With a number 11 scalpel and high magnification, an incision was performed in the lateral border of the optic sheet. This allows better access to the upper carotid ring. The cancellous core of the anterior clinoid process is drilled away and its cortical margins are thinned. This cavitating technique methodically reduces the anterior clinoid, detaches it medially from the roof and lateral wall of the optic canal. With a micro dissector, the tip of the clinoid is dissected in order to remove it. The upper ring of the clinoidal segment of the carotid artery is highlighted with a white arrow. A small piece of bone is still on the cavernous sinus. At this point, small venous bleeding is observed. Dura arising from the supramedial aspect of the anterior clinoid process continues medially in an oblique plane that intersects with the internal carotid artery to form the distal dural ring. After identifying the distal and proximal neck of the aneurysm, the reconstruction was started by placing a 90 degree clip in an anteroposterior direction. Then a second clip in the postural anterior direction and puncturing the aneurysm, showing that the aneurysmal flow is present with a small bleeding. A third and fourth clip were placed in tandem from the proximity to the internal carotid artery to the dome of the aneurysm in order to collapse the aneurysm walls. Finally, a fifth curved clip was placed on the previous ones to give them greater closing pressure. The final surgical view is observed. Postoperative angiography shows a complete exclusion in the aneurysm. The patient shows no neurological deficit the patient gave her consent to publish her images.